What's good? What's going down this morning? Let the redeemer of the Lord say so that he has redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. Um, let those who have been filled with the Holy Spirit say so. Let those who have been saved from their sins say so. Let those whom God has been good to say so. Let those whom have been healed from different diseases say so. Let those who have been delivered from the opinions of other people say so. Let those that have decided that they're going to repent say so. Let those who are on the brink of a breakthrough say that. Let those that it was said that you couldn't succeed, that you couldn't be blessed, that you couldn't break forth say so. Let those who are still going through some challenges and yet still believing in God to do it seemingly abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that works say so let me read you something real quick in the book of psalms chapter 47 and we're going to start reading around i do believe it's going to be verse one he says oh clap your hands all ye people right and shout unto god with the voice of triumph um my God in here, I, I, I think sometimes um, people are, some people don't like when you praise the Lord. Some folks don't like when you praise the Lord like that. They don't care about you praising God, but they don't want you to clap your hands and they don't want you to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. The Lord has triumphed. And so we want to shout on to God with the voice of trying. The Bible says something very interesting. The Bible says, thanks be unto God who always crosses us to triumph through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's why we're shouting unto God with the voice of triumph. Because our God always causes us to have the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is, so I guess it don't matter how it's looking right now. Ultimately, you're going to win. <laughs> uh, some of your victory may take a while. You may have to have patience before the victory. Glory to God. Some of your, your victories may happen today. Ha, shikaraba. Some that you've been waiting on for a long time is going to go down today. Day in Jesus' name. But some of you may have to have patience and continue waiting. But while you're waiting, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Let me show you something else. For the Lord most high is terrible. My God. My God, dia dia bukuba. The Lord our God is awesome. That's what it said. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Uh, the Bible says somebody interested. Now, this is Psalm 47. The Bible says somebody interested in the New Testament. The Bible says the dead in Christ should get up first. And we which are still alive should be caught up together to meet uh, those in the clouds. The Lord himself should ascend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Right, you see how the Bible just lines itself up? Glory to God. Watch this now. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. The man, when the, when the Lord, as I said, I was saying yesterday, when God says something once, listen. But when he says something twice, you better listen. He says, sing praises to God. Some people don't want to sing to the Lord. Some people don't want to clap their hands. Some people don't want to shout. Some people don't want to sing to the Lord. Some people don't want to show their enthusiasm. They go to the Lions game and show enthusiasm, though. They go to the concert and show some enthusiasm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Tigers are doing good right now. They go to the Tigers game and show some, you know. But when it comes to the Lord... People, for whatever reason, some do anyway, have a problem 
with you praising and magnifying your God. Even some people in the church have a problem with you magnifying and praising your God. They don't care about you doing it when the, 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 the music is going because when the music is going, I guess you know they, they can drown you out. But what, what, what happens when there's no music and somebody decides to praise the Lord? Can you praise him then? What happens when the drums are not helping you? What happens when the guitars, the saxophones, and all these things? What happens when nobody's in unison with you? Nobody else is raising their hands. What happens when the Lord wants you to give out a praise to him and everyone's watching and you the only one that's giving God the glory? <laughs> Can you do that? God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. What's with the understanding? My God, I like that. He says sing praises with the understanding. What's the understanding? <laughs> What's the understanding? Do you understand that he's Lord? Do you understand that he's God? Do you understand that he's going to bring you out? Do you understand that he's the king of kings and lord of lords? Do you understand that you are, you are, we are his people and we are created to give him glory? Uh, Shekha is seen with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belongeth unto God. He is greatly exalted. Let me show you something else. Let's read something else. That was Psalms 47.1. Uh, let me let me just look a little bit at Psalms 48. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the city of the great king, God is known in our palaces for a refuge. Listen, right now in the name of Jesus, I feel this in my spirit that next time you get in trouble, you need to dial 911. Now, now let me show you this because uh, before you get your phones out, get your phone out right now. And I want you because, uh, see, I, I, next time you get in a situation. Next time um, they threaten you. Next time they talk about you. Next time depression set in. Next time the husband go crazy. Next time the wife changes the locks on you. Next time they call you in the courtroom. Next time the car break down. Next time they, they come for you. Next time the, uh, the doctor give you a bad diagnosis. Next time they, they, they cabo de hela baja. Next time the school goes crazy. Next time the jobs start talking about laying off folk. Next time the go uh, baja. Next time the world gets a little uh, out of sort and out of way. I want you to, to dial nine one one. Get your phone out right now, baby, and, and and put this right now in your. You need to dial nine. You need to get it on speed dial. But I'm not talking about the emergency line. I'm not talking about the cops. I'm not talking about the, the fire departments. I'm not talking about the ambulance. I'm talking about Psalms 91 and verse 1. It says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Lord have mercy. That's the Psalms 91 and, and verse 1. That's the 911 I'm talking about. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's time for you to start dialing 911 because, glory to God, we have an emergency. We have an emergency praise we got to get to. Now, let me show you something in John chapter 14, and then I'll be ready. So I'm trying to get my own self out. I'm trying, I'm trying to preach myself happy. I'm, I'm trying to get my own self hype, but you can join me. Let me show you something in John. I need John. 
the disciple that Jesus loved laying in the bosom of the Father. He was in the right place. Because when Jesus walked to earth, John decided, I'm going to be in the bosom of the Father. Glory to God. Are you in the bosom of the Father this morning? Or are you just, you know, you know, a far back off? You know, get in the bosom of the Father. I feel this in my spirit. There's revelations in the bosom of the Father. Mm -hmm. There's things that other people uh, may not get, may not know. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah, we have no, it's a no in private interpretation, no scriptures of in private interpretation, but we do, in the name of Jesus, have people knowing more than others right now, simply because they're in the bosom of the Father. It's not that you can't know what they don't, that they know, it's that they're in the bosom of the Father to get the information. That she can. One of my kids, she always right there in the bosom of the Father. <laughs> So she may have some information that the other ones don't because she's always right there talking to me. Uh, somebody right now in the name of Jesus is always talking to God. They're always in the bosom of the Father. They may have some access now to some peace that the other ones don't because they're not in the bosom. So you got to understand something. So now when other Christians are murmuring and complaining, yet you still got your dance because you in the bosom of the Father. Let me show you something real quick. Glory to God. What time is it, Douglas? I want to be, I'm actually in the parking lot. I want to be late for work inside. Let me see. Let not your heart be troubled. This is St. John chapter 14. This ain't what I want, though. You know, I said, I told you John, didn't you? My bad. But I just feel led to go somewhere else. I want to take you to Mark. But 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 get get in John, you know, in your spare time. Mark. Because I just feel led not now to go to Mark. Because I want to show you something that was shown to me. Uh, and sometimes you don't watch yourself. You can't forget the words of the Lord. Oh, yeah. You can forget how good you got it. My God. And you don't forget now. But this is Mark 11 and around Voss. Number 22, Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. That's what we want to have this morning. We want to have faith in God this morning. For the last two weeks, I've been working on my praise and prayer life. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ways you can get in the bosom. Now, of course, we're going to get in the word. But my praise and prayer life. Send Judah first. Yes, Lord. Somebody right now is getting ready to go for an operation. Send Judah first. Somebody right now is getting ready to, to go through a, a court situation. And you're fighting for custody. You, you got things going on. Your folks are coming against you. That's much more powerful than you in the secular world. Send Judah first. Some of you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to go left or go right. But send Judah first. Some of you right now in the name of Jesus, you need wisdom in the midst of the storms. Send Judah first. Some of you right now, they're coming for you. They're coming on enemies are gathering on the left and the right. It feels like sometimes that there's nothing but water in front of you and Pharaoh and his army is behind you. Send Judah first. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, before you send a complaint, before you send a, an email, before you send that text, before you post that thing on a, on your Facebook or Insta Shams or whatever, send you the first. Let me show you something real quick. He says, he, so he said, have faith in God. I want you to know right now, and I feel this in my spirit, that your deliverance is in your mouth. It's not in the mouth of the prophet right now. It's not in the mouth of of, of, of of your favorite televangelist right now. Your deliverance is not in your checkbook. Your deliverance is not in, 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 in your bank account. Your deliverance is not in how pretty or, or, or you, you think you look. Your, your deliverance is not in your dress size. Your deliverance is not how good and how good and nice the beard is faded up and, and lined up. It's, it's not good. Your deliverance is not how you don't dye your hair and all this. Your deliverance right now 
is in your mouth. And I believe it's in my spirit with all my might. And the next is, I think it was September coming to the end of September. So we got October coming down. Glory to God. We, we think for some glorious things to go down in October also. But October, November, December. I, I want you to know this for the rest of the year. Three more months left in the year. And three is resurrection. That's all right. I want you to know right now in the name of Jesus that for the rest of this year, I want you to get this in your spirit. Your deliverance is in your own mouth. Your deliverance is in what you've been saying about yourself. Hey, boss. Hey, Babu. We often always waiting for somebody to, to tell us what to do or to prophesy to us. Or we're sending money to this guy and that guy and that woman and that man. Oh, he said this. Let me send him 50 bucks. Oh, he said that. So let me send him $20. Oh, he did this. Oh, oh my God. Let me, I gotta say, oh, I need a word. What are we doing? If you need a word, get in the word. If you need a word from God, get in the word of God. I know people have got all these things. I heard, a, I heard a man sat in here and said, I heard his title was, The Bible Isn't the Word of God. Okay. Okay. That's what he said. He said the Bible isn't. Oh, okay. And I knew it was something catchy to it. I knew it was something. Okay, okay. And cool. I'm just saying God's still speaking right now through us and, and through men and women of God. But if you hear in anything with these ears, and if you hear in anything in your spirit that contradicts the written, something ain't right. <laughs> if the Bible right now says in Mark 11, round verse 22, right, to have faith in God, and you sit up and talk about, well, don't have faith in God, I, I believe you, something else should go down, then. That's why you got that, that. That's why I love the about one thing I love about Berea. But that those in Berea were more noble than those in Thessalonica. That they searched the scriptures daily, seeing what those things were so that the apostles were saying. They want to take a word, for, take my word for it, church. They thought they, well, they want to search that thing out. Let me see what's really going on. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak to you right now and tell you. Your deliverance is in your own mouth. And I'm about to show you this right now. And oftentimes, I'm going to show you something else that you may not believe, and that's okay. Sometimes you can speak without opening your mouth. The woman with the issue of blood says something maybe interesting. The Bible says that the woman with the issue of blood said within herself, not with her mouth. But within herself, if I may touch but the hem of his garment, I know I can be made whole. Some of you have been speaking within yourself, but you've been speaking negative things. Something been coming out of your mouth, and something else has been said on the inside of you. So sometimes you can have, have make sure your spirit is aligned with what's coming out, with, out of your mouth. You got the mind of Christ. Get the word of God in you. You got your deliverance is in your mouth. So one of the ways you can have a double mind is be, you can be saying you can be saying one thing within yourself and saying something else with your mouth. Your mouth can be saying I have faith in God, but on the inside you're saying I don't think that this is going to work. Let's make sure your spirit is lined up with what is coming out of your mouth. Somebody don't believe that, but that's cool. Mm -hmm. You see it in the world all the time. You see it happen with men sometimes. Well, you can be telling one person I love you. But on the inside, you over to cross town. Make sure your spirit is lined up with what's coming out of your mouth. Right now in the name of Jesus, he says, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, see there, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I hear the Lord saying this, preachers, don't don't relax. Don't relax, keep studying. Therefore I say unto you, what things will you desire when you pray, believe that you shall receive them and you shall have them. 
And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have all against any, that the Father who is with which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, not away your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. The key to your prayer life is your forgiveness. Your forgiveness. If you can forgive, you can have it. If you can forgive, you can have it. If you can forgive, you can have what you've been praying for. Listen, right now in the name of Jesus, he says, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thy removed, me thy cast to the sea, and shall not die in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Your deliverance is in your own mouth. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. What have you said about yourself lately? God bless you.